Thanks a lot for this kind introduction and uh, very good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. As uh, we all are aware, agriculture is not required uh, by law to reduce its emissions under the Australian carbon pricing scheme. However, uh, through the Carbon Farming Initiative, or CFI, farmers and land managers have the options to earn carbon credits by reducing its emissions or storing carbon in forest and soils. There are many technologies for agriculture abatement which are technically feasible, uh, but for potential market uptake under the CFI, these technologies also need to be economically viable, policy compliant, as well as meeting uh, the institutional or social standards or goals. <coughs> Individual CF CFI project proponents are also already doing this sort of analysis, but we also need some broader picture for this sector as a whole to understand the CFI markets better and to inform decision making. Today, I will present some estimates of potentials for agriculture and other land-based sector. <coughs> uh, and it's beyond a project level for the sector as a whole. While there's a lot of work to be done in this space, I will focus on technical potential and economic potential for livestock abatement. And livestock is an important sector in the Australia's emissions landscape. But before I present these estimates, let me touch on the CFI markets itself, what I mean by technical and economic potential, and also touch on what roles policies have been playing or can play in promoting market uptake. To be eligible for CFI credits, uh, participant must be a recognized offset entity, and project must use an approved methodology, and credits must be approved by clean energy regulator. The clean energy regulator is to ensure that CFI credits meet the integrity standards. We'll hear more from uh, our second speaker, Shailene Thompson, on the CFI, its architecture issues, and opportunities uh, of, uh, 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 for, for farmers and land managers, also challenges and opportunities for methodologies. In relation to the CFI credits, they broadly fall into two categories, Kyoto compliant activities-based credits and non-Kyoto compliant uh, activities-based credits. Examples for Kyoto compliant activity would be forest management and non-Kyoto would be soil carbon sequestration. Kyoto credits will contribute to Australia's internationally agreed emission abatement target or emission accounts. And this can be sold both in the domestic compliance market and voluntary markets, domestic or international. Non-Kyoto credits can be sold into voluntary markets as well as can be uh, purchased by the government through the CFI non-Kyoto carbon fund. Kyoto credits are expected to fetch higher prices than the non-Kyoto credits, largely driven by the market conditions. Also, the CFI credits markets are expected to be influenced by the proposed linking of Australian market with the EU emission trading scheme, as well as any applicable caps on international permits and offsets that can be used by domestic liable business entities Everyone, market participants and decision makers alike, will be interested in final or realized abatement. But to have a feel for the realized abatement or actual market uptake, one needs to know what technology and strategy or how much abatement are technically and economically viable. Technical abatement potential means abatement that may be achieved by implementing technologies or strategies purely based on their biophysical suitability 
applicability and effectiveness. For example, soil types or weather conditions can determine technical potential of certain abatement technologies such as carbon sequestration. Economic abatement potential builds on the technical abatement potential, but only considers that amount of abatement that can be achieved in a cost-effective manner. As such, economic abatement potential will be smaller, expected to be smaller, than the technical abatement potential. Obviously, the amount of cost-effective abatement depends on the financial cost and benefits of uptaking abatement activities. Often, such measures do not take into account more complex drivers of investment decisions, such as market uncertainty. Finally, realized abatement. In addition to biophysical and economic constraints, it will also depend on social and institutional settings and adoption decision process. Non-financial factors, such as lifestyle, personal beliefs, social values, can affect perceived benefits of new technology and practices over existing ones, and thereby affecting adoption. These non-financial or human factors tend to differ across individuals and making our ability to forecast final abatement rather challenging. Continuing on with potential versus realized abatement, there are three channels, at least three channels, through which policies can influence final uptake or abatement. For example, the Australian government through the Climate Change Issues Fund, or CCRP, its successors filling the research gap is providing research funds to improve the ability and effectiveness of new and existing abatement technologies and options, which will ultimately influence market uptake and actual abatement. I would also like to suggest that there is a need for a portfolio of policies and measures targeting the individual channels. As I was suggesting, the Climate Change Research Program, CCRP, and its success of filling the research gap, together with other research initiatives, are improving the scientific understanding of technical abatement potential. Here are some estimates of technical abatement potential for livestock methane abatement strategies. These have emerged from the Climate Change Research Program, as well as other scientific studies. It's a complicated uh, slide, I understand. There are three aspects, let me explain. Three aspects to this diagram. The width reflects the applicability of a particular technology and strategy and expressed as a proportion of total livestock methane emissions. The height of a bar reflects scientific findings to date on the range of effectiveness of a technology and strategy. But there's an, another dimension, which is the position of the bar. Uh, on the horizontal axis, and that reflects the expected time of deployment of a particular technology and strategy. To clarify further, let me consider the green stream bar. It represents outcomes of the CCRP research on capturing and using methane emitted from animal waste ponds at a piggery or a dairy farm or a meat processing plant. The research has found that up to 98% of captured methane from a covered animal waste pond can be flared, thereby reducing methane emissions by that amount. This is represented, as I mentioned earlier, height of the green bar. However, this abatement technology is directly applicable to methane emissions from animal waste management using anaerobic lagoons, which are about less than 3% of total abatement, uh, sorry, total livestock methane emissions in Australia, and that is reflected in the width of this green bar. And the technology is very well proven and ready for immediate market uptake, and hence considered a short-term technology. In fact, this technology has been commercially operational under the CFI, and we'll hear more about this technology and aspects of its on-farm commercial operation from our third speaker, Edwina Beveridge, later in this session. Another technology that holds significant technical potential involves dietary manipulation, as it is represented by the light blue bar in the slide. 
the, this bar represents outcomes of CCRP research, investigating the potential of a range of feed types and dietary supplements involving oils and fats, uh, secondary components such as tannins, forage such as um, tropical legumes or crushed wheat or corns. Diet can affect the activity of methane producing microorganism in the rumen and in turn methane emissions from ruminant livestock. I'm not going to go through the rest of the uh, um, uh, bars and uh, estimates individually, but just like note that livestock abatement strategies broadly target methane emissions from enteric fermentation and uh, animal waste. Uh, if you're interested in further details on this technology potential of various abatement technology and strategies, I would welcome you to read ABS technical report. It's called Cost and Potentials of Agriculture Emissions Abatement in Australia. It's available in our website. The report also includes estimates of technical potential of abatement technologies and strategies targeting nitrous oxide emissions from soils as are emerging from the scientific research. In our cost-effective analysis, that is our economic abatement potential analysis, we have also considered, we have just considered three technologies for methane emissions reduction in the livestock sector, which are likely to have CFI methodologies in our judgment uh, by 2020. Uh, targeted breeding technology is very well proven, but it is difficult to credit in our judgment again given the challenges in verifying the purpose of breeding, whether it is to reduce emissions or to increase productivity, and hence we haven't considered in our analysis. On the contrary, anti-methanogenic vaccines and emerging technology innovated to, fight, in, innovated to fight methanogenic bacteria in the rumen, we have considered this in our analysis. It's expected to be applicable to all ruminant animals except a portion of the extensive properties. Nonetheless, the emission reduction potential, the technical abatement potential uh, is rather uncertain for vaccine at this stage. To capture a wide range of possibilities, we have assumed three technical abatement potential, 5% reduction, 15% reduction, and 25% uh, emission reduction per animal. Our estimates of uh, economic abatement potential is based on uh, ABS farm size model, yeah, it captures, it, it models about uh, 200 uh, what we call model farms uh, covering five different livestock activities. Using our model, we have estimated an economic variable we call threshold carbon price based on the discounted value of net profits and net benefits over the project life, over a particular project life. It's very well known in economic analysis called net present value or NPV. One way of presenting the economic abatement potential is what is very well known in the literature called mar marginal abatement cost curves or MAC curves. The estimated MAC curves here showing the amount of economically viable abatement in the livestock sector based on the technologies we have considered. The amounts of abatement are shown uh, in, in, in this diagram, uh, in the, uh, in, in the vert vertical axis measured in terms of million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. So methane is converted into carbon dioxide. <coughs> uh, and these abatements are plotted against the carbon price and uh, uh, the standard uh, expression is it's measured in dollars per ton of carbon dioxide equivalent again. And you can notice some steps in, the, in these graphs. There are two graphs here, one correspond to the year 2020, the other one 2030. And these steps are, em are emerging because in our analysis, certain abatement technologies becoming cost effective for certain farms at certain carbon prices. Um, again, this is a preliminary piece of work, but some useful insights we can draw from these, uh, for example, the MAC curves here show a positive level of abatement at a low carbon price due to the economic viability of methane destruction in large scale piggeries. 
Although the um, economically viable abatement at low carbon price appears to be modest, it is expected to increase over time for given carbon prices. And that may arise due to increased efficiency of abatement technologies or strategies, or, uh, or and as well as uh, reduced project implementation cost, for example, through the market innovations, including uh, benefits for market aggregators. Uh, here, uh, I would like to emphasize the uncertainties around estimating technical and economic potentials of abatement technologies and strategies. The set of marginal abatement cost curves here highlight how our estimates of economic abatement potential varied with the assumed technical abatement potential of vaccine and how it varied over time. Recall that uh, we have assumed three technical abatement potentials for vaccine, 5%, 15%, and 25% of emission reduction by, per animal. Here, solid lines uh, represent the economic abatement potential corresponding to these three ass uh, assumed technical abatement potential of vaccine and for 2020, and the dashed lines represent mar marginal abatement cost curves corresponding to the year 2030. And the two green lines in the middle, they are the same as we saw before. To conclude, um, there are many abatement strategies available to farmers and land managers that if implemented, could significantly reduce Australia's agriculture emissions. However, this abatement technology must be CFI eligible to earn CFI credits. And we also need some aggregate estimate of economically viable abatement potential to understand CFI markets better. Our estimates of economically viable abatement pre presented here only focused on livestock abatement and selected technologies. These estimates seem to suggest substantial reduction in technology cost will be required for realizing significant livestock abatement opportunities. Our estimates, as I mentioned, are preliminary. Importantly, we haven't taken into account any possible benefits from market innovations such as aggregators or various social or non-financial realities which may affect the uptake of abatement technologies and strategies. In view of all these, I must uh, caution that our estimates should not be treated as forecast. Going forward, uh, we need to continue our efforts in enhancing the understanding of technological viable options, their economic viability, ways to dealing with non-financial issues. These all are affecting actual adoption of abatement technologies and strategies. Obviously, a lot of work ahead of us. Once again, I will uh, I invite you to read ABS report available on our website. And finally, I would like to thank my colleagues at ABS for undertaking research for this report, and my DAF and DCC colleagues uh, who have contributed at various stages of the work and also provided very useful comments on the report. Thank you.